Welcome to the Growth and Banter podcast. My name is Blake McCullough, CEO and founder of GMS Media Group, one of Australia's leading digital advertising agencies. This podcast is for any business owner or aspiring business owner looking to learn the strategies and secrets to navigate today's complex digital landscape. Today, I'm joined by a good friend and business advisor, David Sawicki from Third Wave Ideas, and we're going to talk about what they don't teach you in business. Get ready because there's going to be lots of gold nuggets. Business is a broad term, as is entrepreneurship. What, what does it mean to you? What, what does business as a term, you know, you're, you're doing lots of big deals, mergers, acquisitions, you know, you've been, you know, you, you, you sort of, I'm a small fish compared to what you're dealing with, but we're, we're sort of working together on a few things at the moment. But what does business mean to Mr. Sawicki? So you said you're a small fish. <laughs> um, you know, the, I like to enter into any conversation, mm. um, any business meeting. In fact, yesterday I, w- I was at this networking event and, and they said, can everyone introduce themselves? <clears throat> so I stood up and I said, well, I'm the dumbest person in the room mm. to start with. Let's get that very clear. I, I, you know, everyone else comes into a room being super smart. Yeah. Um, if you've ever been in a room with an investment banker, private equity, they'll probably never talk to me again if anyone watches this or listens to it. <laughs> I'm sure they would. But at the but but at the end of the day, anyone who enters into a room knowing everything, um, they just don't. Mm. And really, when you walk into a room, you don't know anything. So the person who learns the most can give the most. Mm. And for me, business is about giving the most. It's about growing people. It's about growing companies. You can't grow companies without growing people. Mm. And I remember when when the world was moving into a digital age and everyone went, well, it's going to be a lot less people and a lot less, no paper and and, and all of that. But the the reality is you're always going to have people Mm. and you're always going to have issues and, and and the more you learn, the more you can give and the more people can grow. Mm. So to me, business is not about profit. It's not about revenue. It's about how far can you help someone grow. Mm. And with that, when people are doing what they love, mm. then they're doing business. That, that's a huge, yeah, huge point there. It's, it's not the product or the service. It's what are you doing to help people you know what? What's what are you doing to help the market? You know, it, it's it's the need, and I think it's a big part of where people get wrong. It's like they think that it's the product. It's it's really comes down to the people, you know. And you know, talking about services, that's that's paramount, you know. And I know that you've had some you know part to play in Ogilvy, which is a huge huge sort of people um, business. So talk us through how a big business like Ogilvy can can foster and and build such a workforce of talented individuals so if we if we go macro outside of ogilvy Mm. and look at what the structure of ownership was of that organization so ogilvy in australia was owned by originally john singleton Mm -hmm. so john singleton bought ogilvy singleton ogilvy and mather the third company that he bought after that was my company a company that I'd done a startup in, which was an employee communications mm. called Impact Employee Communications, and that um, I sold uh, that to Singleton, Ogilvy, and Mather um, before STW was started. And I'll, I'll give you the chronology. Mm-hmm. And then I, uh, I the other half to a, a bloke out of London called Sir Martin Sorrell, WPP. Mm-hmm. So there was WPP involved. There was Singleton, Ogilvy, and Mather involved. And then we we decided uh, down the track once we'd done that deal, um, and that and that deal is a podcast in itself. Yeah, I mean, working with people like that, yeah. learning things from the best and the toughest uh, and the most ruthless people that mm. that I'd ever met in my life. I was so fearful, and 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 doing our DD around joining swimming with group, sharks. <laughs> you, you know what's a level up from sharks? I mean, there's, there's, you know, I, I saw something on Instagram you say about the speed of marine animals, mm. and there's an animal that just goes at 152 kilometers an hour in the ocean. 
I think they're that. It's mm. black sailfish. Ah, and yeah, yeah. Uh, so I, I think we're dealing with black sailfishes okay. um, there and sharks were – they do 52 kilometres an hour at top speed. Wow. So you you really got to – you've got to learn a lot fast. You've got to deal with fear. Mm. Um, and, and by the way, there's not a day that I don't wake up anxious or scared. And, and that's in the morning and then what I do during the day – Helps me sleep at night because mm. I drive everything forward. That's sort of my mm. my mentality. So, STW, WPP, and Ogilvy was a big part of that, um, and we grew from three hundred people to four and a half thousand people with yeah, ninety well, acquisitions. So crazy. We learned something. And what what do you think's been you know aside from that first sale that you had with your business and that that's phenomenal. Um, what what's been sort of your biggest and most sort of favourite success that you've had, do you think? It's a really good question. And it doesn't have to be about selling a business, by the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, my greatest, uh, I judge success on you're as happy as your unhappiest child. Yeah. And and I've grown two daughters who are remarkable, mm. both of them. One's in media and advertising. Okay. And uh, the other one is um, in third year marine biology. Oh, wow. And has taken my passion of surfing to uh, into her environment and her expression of what the ocean means for her mm. in marine biology. So one's gone down the business path, the other one's gone down your, your hobby, your surfing path. Yeah, that's right. But inter- interesting, the juxtaposition of that is that the one who's a marine biologist is quite business oriented. Okay. <laughs> but the, the one who's media and advertising, she's actually a deep creative. Ah. She's a deep thinker, ah. you know, and she, she does get business but she's into the ideas. Okay. And how does that uh, actually manifest in every channel and everyone's brain and what's the big idea that everyone's going to centrally move around in a contemporary world that we live in. So she's going to be the visionary. She is. She mm. is. Wow. So what what do you think they're like what what's the what's the path for them? They're just finished university or the uh, the older one is finished okay. media in advertising and the young one's doing third year marine biology, but that's my determinant of success. Mm. Not that that I just, if they're, it really comes down when you have children, when they're happy, you're having a good day. And any good parent knows that. Any bad parent, they think differently. Yeah. My, my, my daughters are, are, they're driven, they're focused and, and they're just good humans. And to me, that's success. Yeah, absolutely. Business, um, you know, what, what is success in business? The amount of people that I have grown mm. and helped grow, um, that success, the amount of companies that I've seen grow uh, under my stewardship and mm. my, 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 my assistance um, and, and my love and their love. I mean, it's, mm. it's, I like to think that, you know, in the old days you had to be tough, you had to be ruthless, you had yeah. to be, you know, they always used to say you had to fail five times. But Well, I just think that's bullshit. Mm. You don't. You've got to fail a lot because if you're not failing a lot, you're not trying anything. You're not learning. So that's fine but you don't have to fail in business to succeed. Mm. You've got to be a good person. You've mm. got to think about other humans and you can do things nicely. I've seen things not done nicely. Mm. I don't work that way. Yeah. I don't totally care what agree. it is. I, I choose people to work with that I love mm. so that I get up every day and I go, I can't wait to mm-hmm. see John today mm. or I can't wait to see Dana mm. or I can't, I, you know, I, I, I don't even think I work. <laughs> I just live. It's life. It's, life. it's living, yeah. mate. It's, it's, I mean, this is fun. This is, this is work. This is, yeah, this, exactly. Can we get paid to do this? I'll do this every day. I love this, you know. I, I I love and I love working with people that 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 listen mm. and and look into my eyes and I can look into theirs and go, you know, I, I see the pain mm. that you have mm. every day. Mm. I see the challenges 
I feel the challenges. When you go home with pain, I go home with pain. Mm. Um, and it'd be nice if I didn't, but that, actually that's what happens. It's not all glitz and glam and that, that's exactly how we met. You know, you, you've, we've been sort of working together for a year now and we're working on some, some pretty big things this year and part of that is to level up and, you know, you, you've shared a lot of wisdom and I can, I can see, you know, the, the life and the journey you've had, you know, and being able to share that to others has been, you know, awesome to sort of witness. Um, but in terms of like leveling up and, you know, you mentioned that first acquisition you did in business, you know, that w- would have taken a fair bit of hustle, fair bit of grind to, to get those big whale clients, you know, to, to start leveling up and attracting the big players, you know, and, and you know, getting a business to a point where a, a business like Ogilvy would, would even look at you. What's the methodology around, you know, putting yourself in a position to, to get the big guys on board? Yeah. From any industry point of view, you know, because this relates to service businesses, you know, sure, products, anything. Sure. Don't don't ever um, sit with protocol. Okay. Right? You've got to do things others won't do. You've got to go to places that others never go. And you've got to talk to people you would never meet. I've made a practice and still today where I'm at, just yesterday, as I mentioned before, I was doing – um, a networking event called Networking in Nature at the Botanical Gardens at 7 a.m. Who does that? <laughs> I do. Why? Because I met a stack of people I never would have met. Uh. And when I went into uh, STW, call it Ogilvy at the time, there were seven guys and one woman. They were the mafia of Ogilvy in Australia. Mm. I had to make friends and win each one of them over, not by holding my hand out and going, what can you do for me? But by thinking in my head, getting to know them and understanding what they needed. Now, I didn't give a stuff about what I was selling, but I was going to deliver them what they needed Mm. faster, better, smarter than anyone else. Mm. And I did that. And to this day... Those seven people, you know who you are. You may be listening to this. Well, one has passed away and he was a beautiful guy. He actually started Are You OK Day. Oh, wow. Actually, okay. Gavin Larkin, yeah. gorgeous guy. And these people after uh, six to 12 months, um, and remember I wasn't an advertising guy, so they took in a, 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 a communications guy that mm. had nothing to do with advertising. <laughs> and in those days, if it wasn't advertising, no one cared about you. It was <laughs> unsexy. And yeah. by the way, I love unsexy businesses. I think they're, they're really good. Yeah. I find unsexy very sexy. Yeah. So I ended up making friends with this Mafia 7 and they really – took to what I was bringing to them. They took the value. Mm. And I look at every single person that I meet and think from the first split second I see them, what is the value I can create for that person? Mm. Now when you're doing that versus thinking about what can I get from them, it's a whole different mindset. It's yeah. a different ball game. It's a different game. So I will go and meet people that I wouldn't normally meet in life. Mm. I will go to places I don't generally go. You know, I'll go to restaurants. Uh, I'll go out to – now, I'm sorry if you live in Liverpool, but I, I live in there. I don't often go out w- that far west. But I'll go out there to eat at a restaurant, mm. to feel the culture, to see the people, to understand what's going on. Change I just, up. I just yeah. love it. I, I, I eat it up. I eat up um, what people do, where they live, who they are. what, they, And I do it when I travel as well. So mm. I've picked up clients in the toilet – <laughs> of the Singapore Airlines <laughs> Club in Singapore and I picked up one of my biggest clients no standing next to him in the trough. I mean, who would think? <laughs> but I did. That's another podcast. It's another. It's called, the, tro- land, it's called to, the trough. How to land a client in the trough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> so I, I, I just think that we, we, we go too far on protocol. We're too, um, we're too scared. Yeah. To do different things. Yeah. And I think that's like I, I'm a big believer in straying from comfort. You know, if I'm in a position where I'm sort of doing the same thing every day or even every week, you know, business is just plodding along and not really growing, I get anxious. Like it actually gives me anxiety. 
And I think a lot of people might neglect that, but you use that as motivation. I'm always looking for new things and to meet new people, like you said. So I can relate to that. And I think it's, a, it's an important message, you know, whilst comfort is good, it's also even riskier. You know, I think, you know, getting outside of your comfort zone is the best thing you can do in life. It doesn't necessarily mean making more money. It's just, you know, it, it gives you a breath of fresh air. So you have to spend your life uncomfortable. Mm. Because if you're Get comfortable, comfortable being uncomfortable. You're dead. You're dead and you need to know your value. You need to believe in yourself and you need to have many moments in a day where you feel like an imposter. Mm. You know, I, I, you can all go in and watch Mike Cannon Brooks's uh, The Imposter Syndrome uh, Talk. Imposter Syndrome Yeah, that's a good talk. one. But, but it's if you don't feel imposter syndrome, you're actually not going hard enough. And I think it's very valid. Mike, Mike Cannon-Brooks didn't come up with it. He articulated it well. He did. I just think we feel it every day. You know, there'll be days when I'm driving and I feel like a king or a queen, whatever, diversity. <laughs> you know, but there'll be days when I'm driving the same car and I feel like an absolute failure. Nah. Like, I, like I shouldn't even be advising people. I shouldn't be helping. Nah. I shouldn't, you know, but, but when your heart's in the right place... You're going to have those swings and roundabouts We're on, all human. on emotions. And if you're not having good swings and roundabouts, a lot of them, you're not going hard enough. It's the same as the failing. You've got to feel all elements. You've got to know what a bad day is yeah. to feel a good day. Mm. And, and you know, every time you have a good day, you know you're going to have a bad one. <laughs> you know, we've never done our biggest deal mm. and we haven't done our smallest deal As uh, Dr. John Martini used to say, he was a personal development coach, we used to market before I started the agency back in the day and he's a big believer of universal laws, you know, balancing your life and, and not striving for happiness but more so being content because without happiness you need sadness. So you can't have one without the other in other words. And I think if you spend a lot of your time thinking about other people's happiness as well, and that's part of helping people grow, your happiness comes with it. It's the same mm. as them doing something they love, profit, revenue, profit, all comes with it. Yeah, absolutely. So changing pace, let's talk about you're an avid surfer. You're still shredding. How, how integral do you think that is for your well-being, you know, your, your life and just, you know, yeah, talk us through what surfing, you know, brings to your life. Because a lot of people, you know, I think, I think another thing as well in business is that not, I don't think people have enough activities outside of work and, and family, you know, like talk us through what surfing does with, with you. So I started surfing at, uh, when I was seven mm. and it's a beautiful time to surf and even though Ogilvy had the KFC account and still do, I started my whole surfing career by my father buying a bucket of chicken, <laughs> right? So in those days, and I've been trying to get KFC to bring back the, 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 the foamy, yeah. right? So in those days when you bought a bucket of chicken, you got what was a chunk of foam <laughs> called the KFC foamy. And everyone from Shane Horan to you name it, all, all the great old surfers that were, were the stars in those days, um, we all started on KFC foamies yeah. um, and, and you would go out for a paddle at Bondi and I'm a Bondi boy, mm. so born and pretty well bred down there and, and you would go out, paddle out on your foamy and you'd have no skin left on your stomach. And in winter I remember you'd wear a, a football jumper. <laughs> Like what were we thinking? A football no jumper because it's made of wool. You'd wear that into the water. No wetsuits. A wetsuit wasn't thought of. There were Crazy. no leg ropes, wetsuits, none of no that. No sunscreen either. No, no uh. sunscreen. Man, I used to burn. And, the, you know, the, the people that laugh and, and make so much money off me is one of my great friends that I went to school with, brilliant dermatologist. Uh guy called Dr. Rob Rosen, okay. he's making a lot of money out of me because <laughs> every three months I need to get checked now. Uh, but, you know, you've got to have regular checks. But my surfing days were raw. Bondi was a rough, tough place to grow mm. up as a kid. So was Maroubra. Mm. I do, uh, you know, I have so much respect for the Bra Boys mm. and what they were. It's nothing like it today but still a beautiful place to yeah. be. Uh, there's nowhere like home, right? So I grew up surfing. Uh, down at Bondi and then, you know, my, my parents didn't have much and that was my, that gave me a sense of 
who I was very early. It also gave me a sense of calm, peace and, you know, mm. all the things that everyone says, but really it gave me a place to go to. Mm. It gave me a place there because I'm not a pack, so I don't go with packs to go surfing and I just surf by myself. Mm. And and I got mates I surf with, sure, but, you know, you go surfing with a mate and they're worried about the wind, one's worried about the swell. I don't give a yeah, shit. It's a wave, it's a wave. Yeah. To me, you go out in the water, you come out smiling, you've done a great job. It doesn't matter how good you are. No. I actually think I'm a better surfer now than I ever was. Yeah, really? Yeah, I think I, I, I go hard. I go quite smart. Mm. Um, I called my company Third Wave Ideas mm. for a reason. I never noticed that. Yeah, so Third, <laughs> third Wave <laughs> Ideas um, because when you travel and you're surfing in tropical climates on coral, you never take the first wave. Mm. To me, I look at them and I go, you're an idiot. You take yeah, the first that's wave. That's a scary move to right. take. Never take I, I learned that lesson at cloud break. <laughs> exactly. So how many do you want to get on your head? You've got to think. Because if you Not go three. down on that first wave, you've probably got about four or five waves to take on the head. Mm. So I called it third wave ideas because in surfing, I've always made it a practice to go the second or the third wave because I'm calculating my exit. Yeah. And in business, I calculate my exit as yeah. well. So. Uh, I always thought there was a nice correlation between third wave ideas, what I do in business, never take the first idea in business or mm. the second, wait for the third, think about all of them, make a decision. But never really would you end up taking the first unless it's an absolute cracker. Mm. But I won't take the first wave. Generally I won't take the second wave mm. and I will take the third because everyone's clambered for the first and second. I've got the run of the field on the third, <laughs> right? So when I travel overseas and I go to Sumatra and places that I feel at home, you know, that I love, you, the waves are perfect. I do 80 hours of surfing in two weeks. Mm. I come back and I've had my fill for the next two months. Yeah. I find it hard to get into the water in Sydney actually. I'm the same. Like I, I was actually spearing. I went to Noosa and there was not a single wave, probably about a foot. But I prefer surfing more when I'm out of Sydney. I think the east is actually quite hard. I, I had a good little session at Bronte actually. I, I've, I've started picking up a little bit more recently. I had a shoulder operation two years ago. Couldn't surf for a long time out of that. It took my confidence away as well in the water. Um, but, yeah, like I, I totally get what you're saying. Like being able to just get out there and it's a good analogy, you know, like – what you and I think this goes for a lot of even professional people. You know, their their sort of business and work regimes are very interconnected. So the the thing about surfing is that it has given me that third place, mm. and I think that you know I do a lot of my meetings um, not in an office. So you've got to think about what your third place is. What's your first place is home. Your second place is wherever your office is, and what's the third place? And the third place you've got to think about as can become uh, a really massive part of what you're doing. That third place is not one place. Mm. So I meet clients down at McMahon's Pool down at Maroubra, you know, the ocean pool down there, yeah. and we do two-hour sessions there. I do a two-hour walking meeting every Monday morning That's around cool. Mossman and Cremont Point with a client. And that, that guy has been a client of mine for 11 years. He retired last year and we loved being together so much that we still get together for two hours every Monday morning because we're in a few businesses together, different businesses, but we just enjoy each other's mm. company and we talk business and we walk. Mm. So a lot of my week actually is in that third place. Where Where is your, you know, where's yours or anyone listening? Where is your third place? Surfing has given me a life of no depression mm. of very little anxiety you got to have some anxiety if you don't have any Horse. anxiety what the hell are you doing you, you got <laughs> not trying you, hard you know, enough you've got to, every morning as i mentioned before you wake up anxious but but it's given me that place to go to and and strangely even though i'm born and bred bondi the place i do go to when i need solace when i need to get away is maroubra mm. it's just I just love it there. It's my my little spiritual home. Yeah, that's awesome. And it doesn't have to be surfing too, right? I think it's just good to have something outside of it, some sort of hobby, you know? Like it's oh. just there's there's too many people I think that just don't do it. I don't do, do anything. I don't understand people yeah. that don't have a deep passion in something. Something. 
It doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't matter if you play chess. Yeah. It doesn't matter if you play bridge. It it just doesn't matter. But I don't understand people that don't have that. I think people probably think that they they're not good at anything, but it's you don't have to be the best at something to do it, you know? I think if it gives you joy, and I think fair enough if you're playing golf and you shoot at it, it's frustrating, but you know, just keep at it. And you don't have to be great, so long as it just is a vice to peel away from the nine to five. It's this feeling great at it thing that people think they've got to strive and be the best. Mm. No, you've got to be passionate. And I don't understand people that don't have a passion. Mm. I don't get it. It, it doesn't resonate with me. And, and I can't work with people that don't have a passion in something outside of what they're, they're doing at work mm. because it's my driving force. It, it, it's my if I don't do it for two weeks, I feel ill. I, I you know, I, I, I've got to go, and but I don't need to do it every day. Yeah. But I need to always ground myself in that. Yeah, that's since I was seven years old. So I've never had any. That's been my main thing. I'm not into driving fast cars. I'm not into, you know, a whole range of things that other people. This is my thing. Yeah. Right? But yeah. what's what's your thing? Yeah. Yeah. And for those of you who are listening, what's your thing? Yeah. Is it fishing? But it's not just saying I go fishing once every six months. It's what's your deep passion Yeah. and what are you doing about it? I've got an obsession, a really big obsession around massive swells. <laughs> and I've had so two police rescues. massive swells scare the shit out of me. Yeah, they scare the <laughs> shit out of me and that's my obsession with it, right? Yeah. So Nazare, Mavericks, not riding them because my lung capacity couldn't do it. My, my, you know, I, I don't have that skill base yeah. but – I'm in awe of the people that do have that skill base and I'm in awe of the power and the energy mm. of, of the ocean when it gets when, – when get, well, I shouldn't say the ocean, it's actually the world because the energy. if you've ever stared and looked at an ocean and a wave as much as I have and gone, mm. what the hell is that? <laughs> it's a medium of water with a bunch of energy moving through. Mm. And if you look at it from a drone, which we have access to look at now – it's a line of energy going across the ocean. I mean, it's just a strange mm. thing. I mean, uh, who really thinks so? I think about that stuff. Magical. Magical. You're watching Pipeline, the, the Pipeline? Yeah, yeah. It should moment. be on today, actually. Kelly Slater's, what is, how old is he now? Still competing. Mate, he's 52, 53. It's crazy. Yeah, I he's good. He, Look, he's, he's... He got through to the, oh, I can't remember what it was, but yesterday he, he, he surfed well. Yeah, no, I, I haven't seen any of the footage yet. Um, I've stood at pipe. Uh, it's a really scary one. It looks scary, even watching yeah, it. It yeah, wasn't it wasn't scary. massive no. yeah, yesterday watching it on on YouTube. But it, it's yeah, you could tell when people were getting wiped out. Just that that you know that that sort of white water area. People were just getting smashed, and it's not. It's like it's almost like a shore break. Yeah, and if you've ever surfed North Shore of Hawaii, it's um, it's all lava. A lot of it's lava. Yeah, it's not it's coral. Mm. Um, and it's lava, and lava's thick. Scary and cavernous. That's why they're introducing helmets. Well, they've introduced helmets twenty years ago. They're now they're starting, starting to, starting to actually, them, yeah, they're starting to be them. cool. I, I, I lived in Whistler. I snowboarded for a whole season when I was twenty, twenty-one, uh, straight out of uni. When I finished at UTS, went straight to Whistler. Lived there for the, for the season. I got a helmet straight away. Um, they sort of had the helmets that sort of looked like a bit of a hat, so they made them cool. And then it was sort of coming in, but I think. You know, ten years, ten to, well now fourteen years almost later. I, I I've not been back, but I'm hearing that everybody's wearing helmets now on on the slopes. Yeah, and, and it's and starting look, to come into surfing. You crazy if you don't. If mm. you're in a riding a wave that is will compromise your health. Yeah, that's right. Uh, on on a wrong foot, and, and that's that what happened with anywhere. Owen. Owen, right? So that's exactly what happened. Yeah, that's yeah. What the books no, that was about. in Fiji, I think. Or was it Chopu? Oh, it was probably Chopu remember. Tahiti yeah. or something. But it, but. Brain damage, you don't think about it until it's happened. It's, yeah. It happens fast. Mm. I wear a helmet on sh super shallow reefs. Yeah, do yeah. yeah, okay. Well, I always have yeah. just because it's probably not going to help you that much but it's uh, a little bit of help to not split your scalp. Yeah, scary stuff. Yeah. So we've talked about, you know, what it takes to get a whale client, surfing being integral or any hobby for that matter, running a business. And not even running a business, just just living life. 
you, the one, one analogy that you've shared with me that I've actually passed to some friends and they've resonated really well with it um, is having a SWAT team in life. And I, I think that it, it's such a great analogy, but you know, I'm not going to explain it because you explain it really well. Talk us through the SWAT team analogy. So let's think about what a SWAT team is and most of you would have watched some form of television around SWAT teams, police SWAT teams where there's a heavy situation on, it's a special bunch of people that come in and they're all come out of this truck going hut, 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 around <laughs> yeah. the situation and they handle the situation. Yeah. So I've always looked at that and thought, that's funny. You know what? When I look at my life, I see that what I've done is you, you've got to have a bunch of people around you that can help you that are professional, right, and and people that know what they're doing. You, you can't talk to friends about a lot of things that are going on, otherwise you're going to spend a lot of time in places you don't really want to go with your friends. Mm. So I, I thought the idea of the SWAT team around a major incident situation, uh, whether it's in a hospital, on a street, in a bank or whatever, I've watched all different teams and they're remarkable the way they work. So I realised that naturally in my life I started putting together um, people around me that when, uh, and I like to think about it, think about the milestones in your life, births, deaths, marriages, divorces, relationships, mm -hmm. right, business, personal. This doesn't cross into business. Per uh, Everything to me is life. Mm. It's like you said, it's 24-7, right? Mm. So I put a SWAT team around me that naturally, and I realised it was a SWAT team when I went, geez, I had my osteopath, I had my psychiatrist, I had my masseuse, mm. I had my acupuncturist, I had my, oh, I can't talk about that one, but I had, <laughs> you know, I had five people that I used when I was in a situation. Yeah. And they all came out of this van hut, 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 <laughs> around me and I called it when I needed it. Mm. And it's a resource base that most people don't think about. Mm. And if you don't have your SWAT team, who's supporting you? Now, mm. I, it's, it's not your wife and it's not your uh, – I don't include personal friends in that for a reason. Mm. They're friends. Mm. They're there. For a range of different reasons. The SWAT team is paid by you mm. to be there and come out of the truck when you need it. Yeah. It's 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 such a good way to look at life. Like and when you break it down, like even I even listed it, I documented it in my project management system and, and I've got like a personal one. And then I've gone as far as then documenting all the partners that help us in business. You know, we've got our clients and our team, but all the other suppliers that we use outside of our team. When I put it down on paper, I'm like, wow, like it starts to add up and then you start to feel way more supportive and it actually adds more power to your day-to-day -day as well because you feel like you've got this backing behind you. And, you know, from business to personal, I think everybody should not neglect that they've got people around them in, in one way or another. You know, I've got the same person who cuts my hair. I got my hair cut this morning. I've had probably for 10 years, you know, as simple as that. Just having those people to go to that, that can tap into different areas of your life. And, yeah, I think like there's a there's a – Independence is one thing, but no one is really fully independent and you can't do it on your own. I want to know how they cut your hair so well <laughs> that you always look so good. It's genetics. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you look at my hair today, it's a disaster. <laughs> it and looks like, good. I like it. It's all over the shop. <laughs> but your hair always looks perfect. So oh, that part of your SWAT team is good. It's definitely not as thick as it used to be. What you said about documenting your SWAT team, clever. Mm. You know, if, if everyone listening does actually – document your SWAT team that you pay, not that is there because they love you or whatever. These people love you but they are paid to look after the element that they're looking after. They are a specialist yeah. in your treatment, in your feeling good, in your wellness, in the way that you operate. My SWAT team is massively important mm. and they'll call in every so often, right, but I'll say, you know what, there's nothing on that I need this for right now. But you better believe it when something hits the fan mm. in, in one of those key areas. Um, on the phone, right, everyone, get ready. we got a situation happening. Mm, and yeah. I treat it that way. And it, it's not just around business as well. Like, you know, you're, you know you, you've been great uh, over the past year helping us with, you know, levelling up our business and tackling some big projects we've got on the horizon the next three years. But 
you know, m- don't neglect mental health as well. You know, a performance coach is sometimes necessary. Um, you know, a personal trainer, um, surfing coach even, you know, if whatever hobby you're doing, golfing coach. There, there's so many different elements in life that it, it's everyone's done it before, you know. there's it's, it's quite rare to think that, you know, you're the first one doing it. So why not tap into skill sets of other people that you can learn from quicker? It's, it's an expedited path. Think of it as your SWAT team. That's it. Note them down, have them on speed dial. 100%, totally agree. So aside from we've, we've gone into some highlights, namely your two daughters, you can't have highlights without lowlights. What's been, what's been some of the biggest challenges or challenge, biggest challenge you've had in life, do you think? Well, there can be many. Yeah, it's a, it, it, I'd say like every question is a good question, but low lights. And you've got to think what do you want to talk about and what don't you want to talk about. Mm. And, and, and I guess I wouldn't call them low lights because every time I have what other people might call a low light, I look at it as an opportunity or mm. I look at it as a… Well, there's a silver lining to everything, right? Well, I'm going to learn something through it. Yeah. Um, and and so low lights, nursing your mother through breast cancer till the moment she dies. Mm. Um, I wouldn't call it a low light. I call it an opportunity. What a blessing. What an amazing experience. There's texture in everything that happens. And and as I'm talking, I'm trying to think of some experiences for you to to share with that. Mm. And it's not being a stupid young teenager and throwing an apple core at some other school children while I was on my P's and crashing that car on New South Head Road and then, you know, we all do <laughs> that's not a low line young. actually, but that's <laughs> just one example. There's so many, um, you know, in terms of low lights, gosh, <laughs> thinking of one, what is one that I go, I mean, one was, you know, deals always come very close. Mm. Uh, a deal, most people think you sign a heads of agreement, you got a deal, well, you're so far from a deal till the money's in the bank. Yeah. It's all about the money being in the bank. So true. And um, I, I'll never forget there was one moment in my history where my business partner and I, and, and he'll be listening to this, he'll know that mm-hmm. moment. Um, but no one else ever knew this actually happened and we'd bit off more than we could chew and it, it was the determinant of what would happen in life. From yeah, that wow, point. Really? And I remember being in the car park in a big building in Sydney and my business partner walked up to me out of the car and he goes, don't fuck this up. <laughs> and in my heart, we'd already fucked this up. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I knew life... Don't fuck could, it up even more. Life could change from that point substantially. Yeah. Big opportunity bit off more than we can chew, couldn't handle it, what were we going to do? Mm. And and so one thing I learned about myself is that my ability to scramble, my ability to hustle fast and in t- with intent was extraordinary. That, that little um, experience cost me $100,000 personally. Yeah. fix yeah. Um, when I had no money. Mm. Right? But, but if we didn't do it, the rest of – we wouldn't be sitting here today. Yeah, well. Um, but it ended up being the biggest thing and that person that I actually went and hired to help paid the money to wow. became my general manager for eight years. Okay, wow. So there's things you learn. So everything that's a low light is not necessarily – it might seem like a low light but it's going to end up being a highlight if, a you, if you hustle and scramble well. Yeah. You know. And that's a good thing as well. Like you, you're going to have low lights every day from a micro level and, of course, there's bigger low lights in life um, that everyone's going to go through. But, yeah, learning from them is so key and waking up that next day and not getting bogged down because if you, if you if it's building up in your head and you're not dealing with it, you're not learning from it, it's just going to, yeah, life will crush you. you got to survive. You have to. And, yeah. and, but a lot don't. Yes. And, and look, remember, if everyone was the same and everyone was good, Competition to be fierce, yeah. right? And it's only getting fiercer. But it's not hard to get ahead of the pack and it's the things that we've spoken about, some of them, mm. that will take you there. And, and so 
when something, you know, something not good comes in every day. I mean, there is a, there's a moment that every time I turn my phone on, <laughs> um, look, it's a bit like, a, a, I'm sorry, ex-partner syndrome. Every time someone's ex-partner calls, what's the feeling in your body? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what's the mindset you've got? What's every cell doing? Yeah. And and it's that ex-partner syndrome yeah. that comes into every moment or every second moment of your day. You've got to be prepared for. Yeah, um, I, I get it all the time. I mean, you can be on top of the pops. Wow, just did that deal, got this done, that person's on their way. And then out of left field comes this ballistic missile. <laughs> that you never saw coming. And who shot it? How did it happen? But it happens, right? So you've one thing, I, I, I handle situations well because most times when my phone calls, it's not the petals are being distributed and <laughs> everyone's really happy. Every time someone rings me, it's a problem, a problem. right? Yeah. There is a, I remember once I had to, low light, you want to talk about low light? I had to go in and report, and this guy will be listening, I had to go in and report one year of my company mm. to some pretty heavy people and they were expecting a million-dollar profit. Yeah, well. Yeah. yeah. Super important because everyone had calculated their numbers. There were 25 companies in the group at that time and mine was one of them and it was making some, some good money and I had to go in and report. And, and two minutes before I walked into the boardroom. Wow. Two minutes before I walked into the boardroom, the accountant rang me, their accountant. And said, oh, Dave, listen, um, slight issue. We double counted some of the profit. You not, you haven't got a million bucks to walk in there with. You're going to walk in with 400. Yeah. yeah. And I remember that moment, the life sucked out of me. Like I couldn't breathe, right? I was scared. I was so scared. Yeah. I, was, I remember standing in my office looking out the window at all these people that were, it was Christmas time, right? It was like, like oh, no, the, even worse. It was the day before Christmas, everyone breaking up. But everyone was down at, uh, I was in Sussex Street in the, in that big tower yeah. there and the Price Waterhouse building as it was at the time. And I remember looking down, seeing the people partying down. And, and I wanted, and they're the moments I call the shopkeeper moments. You want to just, I, I want to be a shopkeeper. Mm. I want to sit in a store with selling books. <laughs> Not that I'm interested in them, but I don't want to have anything to do except sit behind a counter and look at people. Right? <laughs> That's where I wanted to be. I Crawling saw people having lunch. I just no no responsibility. Yeah. Right now, I had all the responsibility. I had to walk into a boardroom. So I walked into this boardroom. I could not breathe. Mm. I, I needed a respirator. I walked in. I asked everyone to leave the boardroom except one guy. His name was Chris, and he'll be listening. <laughs> and I said, Chris, I don't know how I'm going to tell you this, but I've got to just tell it to you straight. This has happened. And it was like a shockwave had gone through over his head. His <laughs> hair went back like this. It went, whoa, <laughs> whoa. And then what you got to do is you got to shock and awe fast. Bad news has got to come fast, mm. right? And then rip uh, the band aid off. Rip the band aid off. Let the, let the shockwave go. And then everyone just take a breath and settle down and we're going to work with this, mm. right, because we've got an up here, we've got a down. So, But it was a horrible moment in my head. I've done the walk of shame. I've done the walk of shame where after GFC we got paid a lot of money um, and I knew they'd be asking for the money back. You know, the walk of uh -huh. shame was going to the, the, the heavy dude's uh, uh -huh. office and uh, and having that and, and that happened exactly as well. I Said it, but that's why I built in a clause of non-refundable. Hey. You see, you've got to do some smart things along the way. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and so there's they're the sort of low lights, but you turn those low lights into what did I learn out of that? Yeah. How did I tackle it? What what could I have done better? And um, but they're going to come all the time, mate. They're going to come every day, every second half hour. You're going to have mm. is going to be. A ballistic missile mm. that goes back to i guess the the universe leveling you out you know you can't just be on top of the pedestal 24 7 and if you are and you're shouting on top of it it's there's it's the missile is going to hit you bring you back down to earth well, the missile is going to hit you yeah that's what your swap team's for absolutely yeah. got to support you you yeah. need support yeah absolutely the i want to talk about you know there's a few industries i think that are hot right now You've had you sort of got your, your finger in a few pies with you know some big deals and maybe we can talk about some of the exciting stuff you you're working on at the moment. 
probably some that you can't share, but um, what what's some of the hot, you know, businesses, industries that you're dealing with and ones to look out for for other people? So I really like industries. So I don't do a lot. I do some in agencies still. Mm -hmm. But, well, let me just pull it back a little bit and just go that there's not a person that I don't meet that doesn't look me in the eye like this and every single CEO, founder, everyone looks at me and goes, but my business is different. Mm. Okay. And when I get that, in my, my mind's going, okay, good, excellent. <laughs> okay, so let me ask you, do you have people? Yes. Do you have product? Do you sell a product? Yes. Do you have systems and processes? Yes. Partnerships? Yes. Profile in the marketplace? Yes. All that stuff. And then I go, huh, your business is not that different to other people, right? Mm. They go, huh, yeah. You're right. So when I had 90 companies that I was juggling, working with, with the team, we had to create a system and a process to be able to have apples to apples conversations mm. to understand what was happening across that. I've taken that into my life now and I've taken it in, into many industries and I still get the comments of, but my business is very different. Mm. Actually, the principles of business apply. And there was a guy who once said to me, Here's a low light for you. So there was a guy <laughs> who once said to me, I, I remember 35 years ago, so I was in hotels before I did started my agency mm. and 15 years with the biggest group in this part of the world. And I remember thinking to myself, I really want to get into real estate because I reckon I'm pretty good. Like <laughs> I could sell real estate. And I've always loved the idea except, yeah. you know, I thought I could change it up a bit like you don't have to walk into a bathroom and go, this is the bathroom. <laughs> you could just actually present a place like John McGrath did and change the game. Yeah, and yeah. I thought, you know, I wanted to get into real estate. I remember I went to see a guy who was a big dude in advertising mm. and I thought, oh, I'll do that or I'll go into advertising. I thought, it's quite fun. I could yeah. be a suit. <laughs> I could really do it quite well. And I remember going to sit with this guy uh, mm. and his name was Grant. And if you're listening, Grant, life moved on. <laughs> And, and I still ask after him with other people. Mm. And, and it's sort of quite funny because he, he said to me, mate, you can't move industries. That's no, just a crazy idea. Why would you do that? Mm. You just can't do it. And I remember walking away from that meeting. It was in Neutral Bay. And I walked away because I never give up, right? Yeah. I, I go and meet so many people doing many things. I, I, if the garage doors open, I'll walk into it <laughs> because I want to see who's in there and what they're doing because yeah, right? yeah, I'm yeah. curious. Yeah. That's the other thing. We need to talk about curiosity yes. after. I've but seen that. That's yeah, skill. So, so I just love any industry and I've really enjoyed spaces like the NDIS. I like industries that help other people. Mm. So I, I got into helping in dementia, NDIS. I got into helping in age care placement and coordination um, I've got into um, a few global tech pieces. Anything that helps someone do something mm. better mm. or give a better lifestyle or add value or create value for someone else's life versus just selling a product. Yeah. You know, and, yeah. and I sort of moved on from agency. I still do agency because mm. I've got a great contact base. I, I know a lot of people. I love a lot of people. I can pick up phones and ring people that most people won't do that to. So I still do some agency work, but I really love sectors. Mm. You would have thought I would have drifted into the surf area, uh, and I did, and I lost some money on some surf stuff. But it's so the, – the surf – Opportunities now, big capex, mm. capital opportunities, the surf parks, the entertainment, the oh, retail yeah. spaces. It's the big players are coming into that now. So mm. there's no real opportunities in that um, that world for me. So I really like businesses that help people do things, grow, live better, mm -hmm. be better. Mm, yeah, and like a big part of I think you know what you've just mentioned then with having a good database within the agencies, you're a phenomenal networker, you know, and I think with networking comes curiosity. So I, I have a big believer in that as well. Like I feel I wouldn't be here today and I've, you know, I'm, I'm, I still feel like I'm at the starting point of my career. I wouldn't be here 
if I didn't network and if I didn't open myself into situations to allow me to meet new people to then lead myself to new opportunities. So network is almost your net worth. How have you done that? You know, you, you're still doing it. You're a phenomenal networker. And I think any anytime I bring something up, you've always got one degree of separation with someone in that particular topic. So what's the secret there? You said it. So Blake McCullough just said the term that is so important. Mm. I always feel like I'm at the start of my career. Hey. I'm older now and I feel like I'm at the start of my career. Mm. So I'd like everyone listening to actually know this is a Blake McCullough saying. <laughs> if copyright. You are, yeah, copyright it because when you're talking – on the other side about your success, which you have, mm. feeling like you're at the start of your career every day mm. is a massive part of that because what do people do at the start of their careers? They're energised, they're motivated, they're hungry. They go and talk to people yeah. and they're really curious. If you can have one quality, which you have, and by the way, whenever I speak about this, the start of your career, because I'm adopting that from today, We've got so it's many yours. podcast topics now. That's another it's one. Yours. It's yours. <laughs> is, Done. is The start of your career is the feeling you should have every day mm. because then if you have that feeling, you'll be hungry, you'll get out, you'll meet people, you will go and talk to anyone you can and do the things that we've spoken about. But if you've got to have the feeling and the curiosity of the start of your career. I will have that till the day I am gone. Well, yeah. You know, and it comes down to passion. Yeah. And it comes down to the other things that were spoken about. But you just created a nugget for your own podcast. Love it. Well, thank you for making me uncover that nugget. Appreciate it. <laughs> but no, it's, 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 it's so true. Curiosity. And, and like I said, you know, it's life's tough, business is hard. Um, but waking up and feeling like that, it's, it's a new day, it's a new day, it's a new year. You know, there's a beginning always. Just a, f a word on curiosity. Yeah. So people often don't look into or get into things that they're not interested in. I urge everyone, and I do it, to go into a news agency. Does anyone remember what that is? <laughs> right, you actually I do. Going, you know they've still got magazines on the shelf, yeah. right? <laughs> How's that even still a business? But, but it is. Isn't right? that where you go to buy so lotto you, tickets? Yeah, yeah, you go lotto tickets and mm. it's the same thing, <laughs> right? So you walk into a news agency and the weird thing about news agencies is they still look so shit. They do. They haven't even been able to contemporize them. Never seen know? a modern one. No, 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 not a modern one. They've still got that crap cardboard. Anyway, you walk into a news agency. And, and, and everyone just try this. It's a tip for you around curiosity. And buy three magazines mm. of things you are totally uninterested in. Tattoos Monthly, Weddings Central <laughs> and whatever else the third one is. Good housekeeping. It could be uh, oh, wearing lycra and bicycles, right, <laughs> riding bikes in the street, you know, for, for exercise. So I, bought, I did. I bought a cycling bike once a tattoos monthly, and, a, and, and actually I bought a military guns one, right? <laughs> and, and I sat on an aeroplane reading through these and it opened my eyes to this incredible, amazing different uh, enterprises and businesses and how they're marketing to people that are interested. I learned a lot, uh. right? So go and buy texts, read things, understand things, hear things, see things that you would never see. Mm. You can buy a medical journal, learn about what's going on in medicine, mm. you know, understand, talk to doctors. No, just that's curiosity. Mm. It's not about being curious in what you're interested in. It's about taking it outside of that, again, getting uncomfortable. You think I sat on a plane reading a tattoo monthly book and, <laughs> and people are looking at me like that's, that's With no weird, <laughs> right? I don't have a tat. But I was interested. Were you inspired to get your first one after reading it? No, nah, nah, <laughs> not at all. But I did learn how they did stuff and, I, and that's curiosity. Yeah. I want to learn and not to get into it, but I want to learn how other people. I walk into a tattoo shop and uh, just tattoos are just so left field for me. Mm. But I walk in and watch how they do them, like that one down at Bondi, how they yeah. actually do the needling and this and that it. and wondering about the pain and all. And I'm curious, man. I mean, it's like how can you not be in life? Yeah. And, and so when I go to New York, 
I spend 15 hours a day just walking and looking into every nook and cranny I possibly can and seeing what they're doing and how they're surviving and how mm. the dudes are hustling and what's going on. And, you know, just I, I'm reading a book at the moment, which I'm so impressed with. He, I really didn't expect much from it. Um, and he, I'd, I'd love it if he was listening. It's 50, 50 Cent, yeah. his book, Curtis Jackson's yeah, book. Yeah. Hustle harder, hustle smarter. I didn't know he had a book. Come on, he's got his just Maybe that's come the next out. one. And I got to say, if, if anyone's listening that knows him, send it back to him. It's a cracker book. Really, fantastic concepts mm. in it. The guy is curious. Yeah, the guy is smart. Have you watched Power the series? No, I'm going to because I've heard all about yeah, it. It's great. I'm in the book, watch but, that. But I've picked up so many nuggets out of out of out of his thinking and the way he's done stuff. Mm. Um, and and some of them really resonated with the way I do things, and that's comforting. But there were things that I learned, mm. and so being curious super important. Mm. And that was just a little tip on how to get curious about things that you aren't interested in. That's awesome. You know, I think you're the king of living outside of your comfort zone, David. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to get comfortable one day. Yeah, I'd like maybe. to just just five minutes of comfort without a ballistic missile or this yeah. or that. You know, someone rings. Give yourself a day off. When, when is the day when people are going to come and just spread petals over <laughs> me? Yeah, oh, probably when I'm dead, actually, yeah. petals, yeah. That and that's work. why you go over to Indonesia to surf so you've got no reception so you don't oh. get those missiles. Yes, you're right. So it is February 2024. I feel, I mean, myself, speaking from personal opinion, I feel this year is a big year for a lot of people. And I've got, I feel like last year was a lot of preparation. Planning the year before was breaking shit for me. And then this year I feel is is big moves. What What is 2024 got installed for David Sawicki? So I vowed this year it's my year of simplification. Yeah. So I think economy-wise, it's going to be a cracker year. I feel it's bouncing back. Oh, it's doing well. Yeah. But, of course, there's always some fucking idiot <laughs> leader yeah. that's going to geopolitically screw everything up. I mean, there's always going to be one. <laughs> yeah, if the world's ever been in a place where it's just teetering on all big fronts, we're doing that and the economies are defying it, mm. right? So, you know... Economies are doing well. They're getting much better. We've got a lot of good flow. Australia is the best country to be in mm. anywhere in the world because no matter what we think of ourselves, we're actually just not that important. And that's the beautiful part of it. Mm. Like we're too far from the rest of the world. People really don't care. And we've got our own little ecosystem. So isolated. Yeah, we follow mm. the US and what they do, but we're, we're so isolated. We're so far. Mm. We're not as important as we think we are. Um, and mm. and that's that's the most beautiful thing about where we live. Mm. It's going to be a great year. I think we've got three years of up. Mm. I think we've got a really good ride. So anyone that's going to grow anything, now's the time to start. And by the way, starting um, people going, oh, I'm going to wait for a better time to start a business. We're idiots. Yeah. You no. want to start a business in the toughest, most grueling periods yeah. of, of history because if you can start a business in a tough time, you're going to have a cracker for the bull run, you know. Mm, and it's yeah, sort great. of we're in that period now that now's the time. If you haven't done it now in a year, it's too late, right? Mm. You need to have had that groundwork. So I think we're in a perfect position for growth. Mm. My year is a year of simplification. So you know, like I'm that. invested in 15 different assets I've got. Um, and, and I want to simplify it. I want mm. to get some stuff out. I want to make life a little bit simpler and 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 not have such. I've got so many complexities around mm. different deals and this and that. everything. So if it's if it's all about simplification for me, whether yeah. it be client base, whether it be investments, whether it be family, whatever it might be, if it's going to make things simpler, it's on my one page plan. Yeah, love it. Yeah, it's good. Anything around AI, it's a huge topic. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah, so I think a lot about it. Yeah. And I think none of us know anything about it. No. I think it's bigger than we've ever seen. I think the agency world is going to be decimated mm. um, because they're scrambling. Which is why we're integrating AI as much as possible. Exactly. So there, I, I don't think we really know what's possible. Um Unless you are the head of Google, yeah, yeah, head yeah. of Apple, um, and there's an adoption Bill period Gates. as well with anything, right? Like there's new technology that comes out. There is a period where 
people won't adopt that, you know. So there's going to be – it's going to take a while until it is, you know, people understand the power and how to properly use it. It's just like anything. But there, there's, a, there's a lot of fear around it, I feel. So you've got to think of AI, an AI – is a brand of of change. What people don't realise is that AI is artificial intelligence. Mm. That's not a brand. That's a way of that is a that is the an thing. intelligence. So the the end of humans in all the movies that we've ever seen, we're closer to that ever mm. now. We will not. You know, if you saw Oppenheimer and nuclear war was the big threat for the that the movie world. was insane. Great movie, great. Uh, and but we didn't. But nuclear threat is not our worry. <laughs> After seeing the drone show at Circular Quay oh, in yeah. Vivid, Fuck, yeah. I then realized at that point that this is how humans are going to perish at some point because when you see 2,000 drones moving in unison and you can't fight back and mm. this and that and you see what's happening around the world and the, you know, the experiencing and defence forces with drones and really intelligence and that's not even AI. I mean that's got AI in it but, mm. but AI is intelligence. Well, it's machine learning so anything it's that has a machine ability to learn is, yeah. Well, that's right. So if you think about yourself and I do think about this stuff, right, so I think – we are a set of bioalgorithms. Um, a computer is a set of algorithms. Mm. But we're a set of bioalgorithms that have been programmed for millions of years. Mm. So at the end of the day, another set of algorithms can determine our life. Yeah, well. And much more powerful than we can and a lot smarter, faster. So, you know, when Google's mm. had those two machines uh, in its simplest mm. form, two machines, they plugged them in together, they started communicating in a language that humans didn't understand, they had to pull them apart. Mm. There you go. That's AI. Mm. It's a scary thought. What it does to business and, and what it will do to people within business, um, you know, I, I'm very confident in the old days... You always wanted your son or daughter to be a doctor, a lawyer, an accountant. Mm. That was something you were proud of. <laughs> Today, they're not even jobs of the future, right? Nah. So if your kid wants to be a doctor, lawyer, an accountant, I mean, they're, it, it's what a waste of time. In 10 to 20 years, mm. everything legal will be AI. Yeah. It'll all be intelligence yeah. operated, even the courts, everything. There's precedents everywhere. Done. Accountancy, all AI. Medicine, mostly AI. Yeah. So, so humans have got to start looking at joy mm. and doing things with their life that are not based around I need to go and show that I'm busy. Yeah. Because you won't have a job. Yeah. You won't have a life. You're going to have to create your own life. Yeah. AI, intelligence, unknown at this point, mm. only by a few of the power of it. Chat GPT is those powerful people giving us a little, little snippet mm. of, gee, it can write a letter for you or can't it do creative? Mm. And everyone's scrambling around going, I'm going to create a creative agency that's AI or mm. this or that. Man, we don't even know what's coming. No, we don't. Yeah. I certainly don't know what's coming, but I love change Yeah, and I love disruption. And I think you need to embrace change. If And that's another thing. I think the, the common threads with all the brands that we've worked with over the past decade is that they, they're they on the forefront of technology. They they love to try new things. They're, they're constantly changing. They're measuring and testing. And I feel, yeah, AI will help us with the mundane tasks so then we can think more creatively. I think that's – and it might, think, it might think for us creatively down the track. Who knows? But – I feel if we can remove some of the mundane tasks, I'm, I'm, I guarantee you most people will be just be wasting their time every day doing shit they shouldn't shouldn't do, you know, and, and getting more efficiency out of your time because time is the one commodity we can't get back. Remember, most people are busy being busy. Busy being busy, busy, yeah. It's the, it's Not, the, uh, so, so on that note, someone said to me the other day, how many emails do you get a day? <laughs> I said, oh, mate. Let me just add it up. How many do you get? I said. Mm. They said, oh, I get 300, at least 300 emails a like day. Like a competition. Oh, and I said, I get 12. <laughs> I said, you get what? Well, I've got spam weeded out, right? Mm. So I, 
I've got 12 clients. I need to fix my spam. I get 12 emails or texts a day. I can see it in one screen. If I can't see what's happening in one screen, mm. that's a problem, Yeah. right? I'm not busy being busy. I'm busy being super effective mm. with people that I'm very targeted on what i got to do. I know what I have to do. There's no emails bounce back this, back and forward. I'm doing my stuff. Yeah, yeah. You know, I don't need to be busy being busy. And one of the best keynotes I ever had was the head of Ogilvy in India at a big global Ogilvy conference and he stood up and he was supposed to speak for an hour. Mm. And he got up and he held the lectern and he looked at everyone. There would have been 500 people in that room from around the world from Ogilvy in a place called Cochin. Mm. which is um, uh, southern India. And he looked at us all and he said, stop being so busy being busy. And he walked off. <laughs> and the next morning he actually opened the conference with about two hours on that. Wow. Um, but that was his keynote at the dinner. Yeah. It was just great. It always stuck in my head. It's so true. That's phenomenal. And, yeah, it, it's about, you know, being efficient and having a high performance life and you have to streamline things. There's so many shiny objects and distractions out there. It's yeah, you gotta be efficient. Yeah. Before we finish up, um, one question I'd like to ask. What what reflecting on your younger years, what would you what's one piece of advice you would say to yourself, you know, in your teenage years? What would you say to younger David Sawicki, knowing what you know now? I should have married Sally. <laughs> you that Sally? Yeah, great girl. Still a friend of mine. But, you know. <laughs> the one that got away? No, oh, you, you, there's always one that gets away. But, yeah, no, I would In say, business and relationships. Yeah. I, yeah, yeah. I, I, um, I love life. Yeah, good. Uh, I would never, there's nothing I would change. Yeah. Um, and, a, and a friend of mine said recently to me, he said, would you come back to this life? Um, knowing what you know and live it again, I said, absolutely. Mm. I can't get enough of it. My mm. mother was like that. I'm like that. I You do radiate life. I've seen that. I But I love it. I yeah. love the high moments and we spoke about low points. I mean, they're all textured moments and I I, I, I take them in. I, I, I feel them. I, I take hurt and feel it and let it go. I, I take things in and let them go. I, I feel real emotion and I let it go through me. I would say to myself, don't change a fucking thing. Mm, love that. Live your life the way I've lived it because mm. it's been so good and I want to go it again. Mm. I don't want to leave. Oh, <laughs> I hope I don't for a while, but <laughs> I really love it. And 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 I've learned so much and I'm learning so much. And I'm and and again, what's what's the nugget that Blake McCullough created today? Live like you're about to start your career every day. That's my advice to myself, mm. which I've lived. Mm. Yeah, I love that. What advice do you commonly give and what would you give to your daughters? I'm sure Stay. you give them advice every day. Yeah, I do, and I'm quite harsh. You have to be. Yeah, and, and they're quite appreciative of, of some of that. And, and I have been a single dad for about 18 years mm. sharing the bringing up my girls with with my the mother of my children and she's been great and we've both been great but we've done it together and alone mm. and it's worked really well but my but I'm quite harsh when it comes down to discipline and keeping them thinking my advice has always been and it's always the same be super curious mm. leave no stone unturned and peek under every rock mm. and look under around every corner and be a step ahead of every single person you look at. Mm. Not in a competitive way, uncompetitive. Be a step ahead in understanding how to create value for every human you come in contact with. Mm. Yeah, I love it. Get comfortable being uncomfortable. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Stay true to that. Absolutely. Well, mate, thanks for your time. It's been it's been a pleasure chatting with you. I'm looking forward to everything we're going to be doing in the future, near future. And I think the one thing that we haven't done yet is going for a surf together. Let's lock that in. 
We'll do that, but it's been super fun. Thank you for I know when I say super fun, I don't mean the podcast. That's of <laughs> course that's super fun. Goes without but, saying. But it's the the time we've spent together. Mm. You know, I love seeing you. I love your, your 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 hunger, your curiosity, your your passion and the your posture in things. And your haircuts are always good. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, mate. Love you. <laughs> Cheers.